I'm Renee, I am the owner and artist behind Chicly Reclaim Decor, and I am also a member of Pink Couture's creative team. Welcome back to another tutorial, guys, where I'm gonna be sharing with you how I created this shabby chic, vintage-inspired redesign, inspired by my grandmother, Sarah Jane Wadley Chamberlain. We're gonna be going over how I layered texture and color for an aged chippy paint look, as well as how I created a faux raised wood grain to add a weathered antique look and feel to this design. With plenty other painting tips and tricks thrown in along the way. So if that is something you'd be interested in learning guys, stick around because that's what I'll be going over today. This piece was actually a vanity that sat at my local Habitat for Humanity for about a year and a half before I decided it needed to come home with me for a good makeover. This piece, well, we'll just say it was well-loved. So I needed to use a good, strong cleaning solution. So Pink Couture has a wonderful thing for just that. This is a TSP-based solution, so it's great for working on grease and grime. It is a very concentrated powder. You mix one tablespoon to eight cups of water. And then what I like to do is I like to add it in um, a spray bottle. I'll spray it on, give it a good scrub, and then wash that off with water. This piece was straight up filthy, but it also had a lot of failed veneer. So I ripped that off and in order to fix it, I'm gonna be using Bondo Wood Filler. Bondo is extremely strong when it cures, so it's really good for fixing issues just like this. This product is super easy to use. Just follow the instructions on the back, but mix well until the color is uniform. Be sure to work in a well-ventilated area and use proper PPE when using this product. But after it has dried, usually about 20 minutes, you just sand it so it's smooth. Next up, we're gonna accent this piece with some iFlex wood molds. These are wood composites that when heated become flexible, making them super easy to apply to a variety of surfaces. You'll need a heat gun or a blow dryer to heat them up with. And I use tight bond glue. You'll apply an even amount of glue to the back, and then you want to place your mold where you would like it on your design. Once in place, you are going to heat this mold up with, like I said, a blow dryer or a heat gun. Once they become warm, they're flexible, and I'm simply just going to press this mold into place and contour it to my design. And then I'll wipe off any excess glue that may seep out the sides here with a wet paintbrush. And the instructions for my tight bond say to clamp down for about 20 minutes. So that's what I'm doing here with the painter's tape. Next up for some even more visual interest, I'm gonna be adding this intricate floral mold to the front of these drawers. And we're gonna be using Picator's new rapid casting resin to do this. What you do is you mix equal parts, A and B, and then you simply pour it into your silicone mold, wait 10 minutes and demold. This resin is super easy to use and it helps you to create these really intricate detailed molds. It also comes in white and black per your preference. I use the same process as if they were iFlex wood molds to glue these down. To protect my paint from any wood tannins or bleed through on this vintage piece of furniture, I'm gonna be using Pink Couture's Premium Plus two-in-one bonding and blocking primer. Now that all the prep work is done, we are ready to start putting down our multiple layers of texture and color. As you can see right here, I am taking Pink Tours Coral Passion. This is part of their chalk style line of paint. And I added about a tablespoon to their crust texture medium. Later on down the road, I'm gonna be adding this IOD paint and lay over my design. So I want to use this crust texture that I've colored with the Coral Passion to create this raised stencil bordering this IOD inlay. As you can see, I've used a piece of paper to tape off the area in which I'll be adding the IOD design later on. This helps me to know where to put my raised stencil border. And as you can see, I've taped down my stencil that way it's just that much easier when I'm adding this crust texture over top. 
being certain to get into all the little nooks and crannies and then very carefully removing starting from one side pulling upwards. As I was saying earlier, my inspiration behind this design was actually my grandmother, Sarah. She always wore these beautiful uh, floral blouses and her home had the best shabby chic aesthetic to it. Now with that in mind, I wanted this piece to look like it was a wood nightstand that had been painted pink, white, and then eventually green, but had been exposed to the elements over the years and aged. And eventually the wood grain itself had begun to raise and the paint had started to ship off, not only to show the original wood grain, but all the colors that it had been subsequently painted over the years. So basically, I'm going to be laying down this raised stencil design as well as subsequent areas of colored crust texture, as well as a variety of colors and other paint resists. Then at the end, I'm going to scrape back the layers of crust and paint resists to reveal not only this raised stencil design, but all of the subsequent colors as well as the wood grain. Remember, you're going for a chippy paint look, so there is really no rhyme or reason uh, as to where you put your crust texture. But I do like to concentrate on the corners because and when you look at something that is um, authentically aged, there's usually a lot of chipping there. Next up, I'm gonna be taking French Rose, which is part of their chalk style paint, and this custom mixed brown paint. And we're gonna begin working on the faux raised wood grain. If you ever look at an old piece of wood that has been stained and that has been exposed to perchance water or sunlight, it looks as if the stain has faded in some areas. And that is the look that I'm going for here by doing this two-toned blend. This blend does not need to be perfect. Firstly, because we're going for a weathered aged look. And secondly, while you will be able to see the raised wood grain texture throughout the piece, there's only gonna be some spots where the paint is chipped to reveal the quote unquote wood underneath. Here's an example. Do you see that area where it looks like the paint is chipped to show the wood underneath? And then you can see to the right hand side where there is wood grain and right here as well. That is the look that we're going for. I'm going to be using a wood graining tool and Paint Couture's Amber Honey Glaze to attain this textured faux wood grain. What I'm doing here is I'm adding a thick layer of this glaze down on top of that blend that we just did. Next up, starting from the top and working downward, I'm gonna hold my graining tool at about a 45 degree angle, and I'm gonna pull it through the stain, rocking it back and forth slowly until it reaches the end of the surface. Now, my texture did make it a little bit difficult to smoothly slide my wood graining tool through this stain, but once again, I'm not going for perfection here. Uh, we're going for a weathered wood finish. Here's an up close look at that faux wood grain as well as texture that we have down. And next up, we are gonna be adding salt wash. We are gonna be using this as a paint resist. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to sprinkle it over the areas where I want this wood to be showing through the subsequent layers of paint that I'm gonna be adding on. Then I'm gonna take my misting bottle and I'm going to mist this product. As it dries, it will become hard, creating a perfect paint resist. My grandmother was very partial to this type of green. So what I did is it's a custom mix. I started with a base of Pink Couture's chalk style paint in the color opal green. I added candlelight and then I tinted it with Pink Couture's concentrated color pigments. And to add even more texture, I went about stipling this paint on instead of painting it on. If you are inspired to try any of the iFlex Wood or Paint Couture products that I have showcased, please do check down in the description. I will put a full product list as well as my affiliate link for Paint Couture. You are not charged anything extra for using that link, but Paint Couture will give me a little something in return. So thank you guys so much for that support. 
This is one of my favorite parts of the process, guys. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take either a carob scraper or a chisel, and you are simply gonna just scrape back all that crust and salt wash resist that you laid down earlier. This is going to reveal that raised stencil design, as well as the chippy elements of pink and white, and of course, that wood grain. Here's an up close shot once I was done with that step. And as you can see, I followed that same process to paint the top, the front, and the other side of this nightstand. To add that chic element to our shabby chic design, I'm gonna be using this beautiful rose chintz paint inlay by Iron Orchid Designs. and we will be using Pankator's water-based top coat to apply it. Once I mapped out where my design was gonna go, I cut it to fit, and then I'm gonna tape it in place. Then I'm gonna take my misting bottle and I'm gonna spray the paint side. Remember, you are going to be applying this paint side down, and this is going to activate this water-based paint. It was really convenient having it taped in place like this because I was able to mist it and then gently lay it on the top of the nightstand while I continued on with this process. Then you take your top coat and you add a pretty thick layer directly where you're going to be laying down your inlay. This top coat is going to be the medium that your paint embeds into. Next up, I flipped the inlay so it was paint side down and pressed it into place. Then you're going to take your misting bottle and spray at this side of the inlay. Next up, you can either take a brayer, in this case, I'm just using this sponge, and I'm going to gently press it or burnish it into place. When your inlay is dry, it is time to pull back this top layer of paper. In order to do that, you're going to spritz your paper and you wanna pull back this inlay starting from one end and pulling to the other. As you can see, I'm being pretty liberal with my misting bottle. If at any point you feel like this paper is resisting you pulling it, just spritz it down with some water and then continue on from there. Next up, we're gonna be doing a little dry brushing with this French Rose chalk style paint color. Dry brushing is a technique where you have very little paint on your paintbrush, and then you use it to gently brush over your design, and it will catch on the raised areas, bringing them to the forefront and accenting them. And that's what I'm hoping to do with the texture as well as the faux wood grain. After dry brushing over the entire piece, this is what we're looking at so far. The really cool thing about these paint inlays is that they're real paint and that they can be reactivated with water. What I wanted to add to this piece was an aspect as if this had at one time had a beautiful hand painted design on it, but just like the rest of the piece, it had chipped away and um, succumb to exposure to the elements. And a big thing that paint does if water is exposed to it is it drips. And so that is what I wanted to add here. So to attain this look, I'm simply coming in and spritzing the inlay and then using my finger to activate the paint and then spritzing again to create these paint drips as you see here. Then I'll come back through and using a cloth, preferably not your sleeve, sorry, but you use it to tap back uh, in the paint until you get the look that you want. And here's another up close look. Next up to accent these molds and to add a little bit of shimmer, I'm gonna be using Paint Couture's Antique Gold. This is part of their awesome Luxe Metallic line of paint. 
and I'm just going to do the same process of dry brushing to bring out the details on all of these molds. I also want to glaze over top of this design, but because I use chalk style paint, which is porous, before I can move on with that step, I need to seal my paint. Otherwise, it'll just absorb all the color from this glaze. So after I sealed my paint, I came through with my Verde Green glaze. And what I'm doing with the glaze is I'm basically just adding it to the corners um, and edges to darken them up and to give this just that much more of an antiqued age look. I also glazed these molds as well and you can definitely see a difference between the top and the bottom mold. After adding some new crystal hardware and some tassels, this is the complete shabby chic vintage inspired redesign. Thank you so much for watching guys. I'm Renee. I am the owner and artist behind Chicly Reclaimed Decor and you can follow me for more furniture flips as well as painting tips. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial where we showcased how you can use Pink Tours Crust to create this chippy paint look and how we used Pink Tours Glaze to create this faux wood grain texture and look. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more painting tips as well as furniture flips.